One of the biggest cliches in football. It's a game of two halves. Thank fuck for that after what we saw in that first half against Brentford. Manchester United, abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. All the good stuff we did against Villa, it wasn't there against the Brentford side, who we knew were going to come out firing from the blocks, who we knew were going to be energetic, first of the second ball. We knew all that. Ralph knew all that. All the players knew all that. But still, we were abysmal in that first half, and David De Gea had to save us. But wow, we were a very different team. Emphasis on the word team here in that second half. Anthony Alanga getting that first goal. Couldn't have, couldn't have been happier for him. He has set the tone in the last couple of games for United, eh? When we've needed someone to. <clears throat> so many senior players letting that game pass them by. And I'm going to get into that as, as we progress through this match reaction. But Marcus Rashford getting that second goal. Sorry, the third goal. And what a wonderful second goal that was. Ronaldo with the chest down. Bruno with the run through, squaring it to Mason. Three goals tonight, three academy players. Hell yes, Manchester United, every single match day since October 1937 have had an academy graduate in our match day squad. It's an unrivaled statistic. And the academy is where I want to focus, not a focus on the, in this match reaction, but I'm just so pleased that it was Alanga who got that goal because he really has set the tone in, this, in these last couple of games when we really needed somebody to because... Somebody, nobody was, nobody was doing it. And that first half, man, I didn't know what I was watching. It, it's, I, I don't get how you can watch a team so expensively constructed look like it's put together with sand and air. I, it, it's, I don't know what it is. I don't know how inept these players are. I don't know where the change comes from. And I also don't know why it's, that's, that's, that is um, a, a, a habit that hasn't changed clearly. Because Manchester United, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, so often we had to be backs against the wall before we realised we had to start playing football. And that happened again tonight. But at least we did it in that second half. To focus on the positive here, and I'm, you, know, you know me on United People's TV, I try and take the positive spin where I can. And realistically, it's probably two of our best halves of football. If you, if you combine that first half against Villa and that second half against Brentford and you put it inside one game, you'd be like, wow, that was a dominant game. But unfortunately for United, we're still having to rely on David De Gea, who had an absolute blinder, given 8.1 here by Sofa score. Our man of the match alongside Fred. Well, we can speak about Fred in a bit. But De Gea being in player of the year form normally means Manchester United are not playing very well. And we didn't play well in that first half. Total domination by Brentford. And we may have had like 60 or percent of the possession, but it was like Louis van Gaal possession. It was possession without threatening. It was point, it's pointless possession. Getting the ball, but you're not really challenging. We didn't have a shot on target. And it wasn't because Brentford's got better players. It's because they fucking wanted it. It's because their attitude was right. And United just didn't have it. Now, I don't know why it took us until halftime to wake up, but at least we did wake up. Now, let's focus on the positives from that game because we just scored three goals, three goals from graduate players. And there's a lot to talk about, a lot of good things to talk about. Starting off with, um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who really impressed me in that game, Victor Lindelof and Diogo Delo. He was actually given man of the match, Delo. Uh, I thought both of them, I thought Manchester United would struggle more against Brentford, especially if, if, you, if you're playing a team who has a towel on the sideline and it's going to dry balls off. You have to be worried about those aerial threats. And Brentford certainly had that today, but I thought we coped with it pretty well. Pretty well, up until Harry Maguire came on and we conceded a goal. Hmm, not sure what you can make of that. But United's defence today, we, we, we were conceding chances left, right and centre in that first half. And in the second half, we tightened every single screw. And I'll tell you who was massively, massively important in that game. And people try and say, I've got, um, I'm, I'm pro-British, blah, 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 blah. No, I just point out good performances when I see it. And Scott McTominay today, right? He didn't play in a, they, they've got it down as a 4-2-3-1. It wasn't a 4-2-3-1. It was a 4-3-3. Scott McTominay has only played that role once for Manchester United. It was against Villarreal in the Champions League. And he got torn a new one. He was abysmal in that game. The game just passed him by. No covering of space, no smart run. But today... Very, very composed. It wasn't an incredible performance from Scott McTominay, but a defensive midfielder doesn't have to have an incredible performance. He just has to put in a 7 out of 10, screen that defence, win the ball back, feed Bruno, feed Fred, feed the players in front of him. And that's what he did. Bruno got an assist. Did he get two assists? Fred got an assist. That assist for an anger. Filthy. Filthy. But Fred, I mean, Fred really is. He's basically two-faced from Batman. It depends which side of him you look at. It depends which highlight you watch from the game. Because Fred in that first half, overhead kicks from his own 18-yard box going straight in the air, misplaced passes, misplaced everything. Fred in the first half, an absolute shower of shit. Fred in the second half, hello, who's this? Where were you in the first half? 
You could say that about every other every other Man Manchester United player, to be fair. But that pass too, ooh, that pass to, uh, to Alanga was stunning. Is that three assists he's got this season? And he's got that cracking goal against Crystal Palace. Fred, if only he could do it across a 90-minute period. Fred pretty much embodies Manchester United as a collective team. When you watch his performance, there's, there's great bits you can pull out and say that was done well. And there's also bits you can go, that was Sunday League. And Manchester United, that first half Sunday League, second half Champions League. It's weird how you've got that contrast inside a 90-minute period. And it goes to show that the frailties are still massively there inside this team. Ronaldo was angry when he got taken off, but it was, I thought they were the right subs. Uh, well, Harry Maguire coming on, you can question whether that was the right sub. Bruno Fernandes there making a real, real difference. Bruno Fernandes in the last couple of games really has been in form. A couple of goals against Villa and he really turned up there against Brentford when we, need, we needed him today with a, with a was he get two assists? I can't remember if he got two assists. He definitely got one assist. But <clears throat> why do we have to why is it the United fans can't enjoy a 90 minute period? Why can't we enjoy a whole game? Maybe that makes me sound greedy given that we just won 3-1 there but uh, you have to see building blocks. This is a Ragnick's period as manager is he has to do these building blocks. It has to be game on game on game, building and building. You could argue that is what we did in that second half. Really, we had a good first half against Villa. We tailed off and we let go of a game. At 2-0 up, as soon as that second goal in, my immediate thought was game management. All I want to see is game management. Ralph Randick made a couple of subs. Manchester United got a third. Technically, the game management worked, right? And his subs scored. So, good game management. Obviously, we're not going to get the clean sheet. Man, that's just how Manchester United do things. Uh, a bit of a sloppy goal to concede. Overall, we've got West Ham coming up now. And it's it's so important for momentum to be actually built. Because we're, we're just chopping and changing. If you're looking at every single performance we've had under Ragnick so far, there's not one game you can look at and go, that's what I want to see. You have to go, right, that first 30 minutes against Crystal Palace, that first 30 minutes against Aston Villa... And that's that last 45 minutes against Brentford. If you can combine all of those into one performance, that's the United I want to see. We're a patchy team inside of games. We're a patchy team week to week. And that first half, I was fuming because, as I said, it wasn't, it wasn't because Brentford have incredible players. They've just been promoted. They are battling to avoid relegation this season. But they wanted to work for it. And that's why Anthony Alanga, for me, stood out tonight again. He only got that goal because he made that cutting run. Fred saw it, great vision from Fred, but Anthony Langer had the desire to go in, run and find that space. And he found that space. 6.9, I think, is pretty harsh on Langer in that game. It was a special moment for him, and I'm glad he enjoyed it in front of the away end. And I'm sure that away end would have been absolutely bouncing after that. But to see Langer get a goal, to see Greenwood get a goal, to see Rashford get a goal. Hell yeah, man. Rashford's been bang out of form. Bang out of form. And he, if anybody needed a goal, eh? It was definitely Marcus Rashford. So let's hope that can be a bit of a turning point for him. And look, I keep saying it. At some point, the penny has to drop for United. The penny will drop for United. And I hope the fact that we've got two games in a row here, of course, it's not the, we're not talking about the full games here. We're talking about patches. First 30 minutes against Villa, second half against Brentford. We have to take that into the game against West Ham and put that in for the full 90 minutes. Because if we do not do that against West Ham, David Moyes will beat United. And I do not want to have to endure that. No way. Thank you, man. But the, the, the player I probably was most impressed with tonight, simply because it was a very tough role. He's only played it once before. And I know how important this is going to be for Manchester United's success this season. That's Scott McTominay. Now, maybe that's... Um, because Brentford didn't press him that much, but I thought Brentford did press him. I thought he played it well. I thought he ran through the lines well. I, we need somebody to hold that position this season if we're going to play 4-3-3, which Ragnick has said we're going to do. Now, Manny Matic is not a man who can play week in, week out. I think if maybe if it wasn't uh, two games against high-pressing teams so, back, so quickly, one after the other, we would have seen Matic start tonight. But Matomane impressed me, simply because he was so bad in that first game against Villarreal as a holding mid. That's what I wanted to see. Fred, I, would, I wouldn't have been surprised if he was hooked at half-time for Donny van der Beek, but he proved it in the second half. That's why he stayed on. Ultimately, United did enough today in that second half. Did more than enough in that second half. We, it, was a, it was a great second half, I would argue. Three goals, really good football, really tight passing, just good teamwork. Just good. It's not hard, man. You're a team of professionals. You train all week. It's your job. Put in the effort like you did in that second half and stop fucking making it difficult for yourselves. I don't get it. 
I don't get United. I don't get... We're, we're two-faced. Fred's two-faced and we're two-faced. First half, but ugly. Second half, beautiful. I want to see more of the second half. You want to see more of the second half. Let's get that consistency and that composure. But big up the academy. Big up Anthony Alanga. Should be starting in the next game against West Ham. Absolutely. Cristiano Ronaldo. That was a lovely chest down from him. Bruno. Yeah. There were lots of decent performances tonight. I personally would give man of the match to David De Gea. That's what it's given down here as well. Uh, mate, David De Gea. If, if David De Gea wasn't here this season, you know where we'd be. We would be nowhere near we are where we are in the league. The lot back four played well in that second half. First half conceded too many chances. But look, three points, three goals. We've got to take the positives here from that second half performance. And we have to take it into the West Ham game. Ralph, that's down to you to make sure that whatever was said was whatever was said at half time, it worked. Get that mentality into the players from the first whistle. That's your job. And players, it's up to you to do your fucking job properly as well. Like you did in that second half. So well done, but do it more.